for the last few modules, we've been analyzing a couple different types of implicatures, which arise from a few different assumptions about communication and the cooperative principle, right? So we saw weak scalar implicatures, which come from thinking about a stronger and more specific thing that a person could have said and didn't say. Right? We saw neg raising sort of implicatures, which arise from assuming that a person has a, an opinion about what they're talking about. And we saw disjunctive ignorance implicatures, right, which come from assuming that the person doesn't have an opinion about what they're talking about. Now, in this module, we're going to look at another, uh, a little bit more esoteric possible type of implicature. So as usual, let's start with an example and then think about what that example could mean and think about how we can get to that interpretation. Um, so imagine that there's a, a homework or something and some guy in the class keeps asking you a lot of questions about the homework and it's getting really annoying. So you maybe you ask me, why does that guy keep asking me so many questions about the homework? Now imagine two possible ways I might reply. I might reply by saying, because he knows you have the answers. Or I might reply by saying, because he thinks you have the answers. So here, what I want to focus on is, what is the difference between thinks and knows, right? What, what's the difference between these two responses I might have given you? Because to me, it feels like they have slightly different meanings. So if I say, because he knows you have the answers, that also means that I believe you have the answers, right? And if I say, because he thinks you have the answers, that means I believe you don't have the answers, right? So by saying one of these sentences, I'm not only saying something about what I think that guy thinks or knows, but I'm also saying something about what I believe. Using these tells you something about whether or not I believe you have the answers. Um, so let's work through the logic of how we can get to these interpretations. But first, let's quickly refresh our memory on the logic we set up for scalar implicatures before, and then we'll see if the logic for this kind of interpretation is the same or different. All right. So remember um, the same example that we've gone back to for the last several modules of a scalar implicature. If I say the water is warm, you might think that I believe the water is not hot. And the way that we get to that, remember, is step one, you think I could have said something stronger. I could have said the water is hot. Then you assume I must have a reason I didn't say that. So step two, you assume I don't believe the water is hot. Step three, you assume I have an opinion. And step four, you assume I believe the water is not hot. Right? That's a typical kind of the way we derive a scalar implicature. Um, particularly a, a weak scalar implicature and a strong implicature. Um, let's try to apply this same logic to the utterance we just talked about earlier, like because I think because he thinks you have the answers, and see if it gets the implicature that we're looking for. Right. So remember the the problem that we're having now is if I say he thinks you have the answers, that suggests that. I believe you don't have the answers. And we want to see how we can get to that meaning. So again, let's try to apply the same logic that we did for scalar implicatures. Um, so number one, you might think about a stronger thing I could have said. I could have said, he knows you have the answers. So if I didn't say that, I must have a reason. I must not believe that he knows you have the answers. Step three, I must have an opinion. Finally, I must believe he doesn't know you have the answers. But if you think about this carefully, you should see these are not the implicatures that I mentioned come with that sentence, right? What I said earlier is if I utter, he thinks you have the answers, that implies I think you don't have the answers, right? I believe you don't have the answers. So if we use this kind of scalar implicature recipe, what we get is an implicature that I don't believe, or I believe he doesn't know you have the answers. That's not the implicate, that's not actually the way we interpret it. If I say 
he thinks you have the answers. Right? So this recipe for scalar implicatures doesn't explain how we get to the interpretation that I don't believe you have the answers. Right? This can give us implicatures about what I believe that guy thinks or knows, but it doesn't give the implicatures about what I believe about what you have. So this, in sort of old pragmatic theory, uh, people thought this is a different kind of implicature than the scalar implicatures. Um, and they sometimes called it a clausal implicature. Um, so the idea of it is this implicature doesn't come from thinking about a stronger version of what I could have said, um, but instead it comes from thinking about things that are presupposed by what I could have said. Um, in a later module, we will talk more about the concept of presupposition. Um, but basically the idea is that there are certain times where we say something that it doesn't literally mean something, but it presupposes it. We saw modules of this back in the, in the very first activity of the class when you looked at examples like, um, Fred's children are boys and Fred doesn't have children. That's a contradiction because the utterance, Fred's children are boys, presupposes that Fred has children, even though it doesn't literally say it, right? So the idea here is that if I say, he knows you have the answers, that presupposes that you have the answers, even though it, I didn't literally say it. So to going back to how we interpret this sentence as meaning that I believe you don't have the answers, we have to use a slightly different procedure to derive that implicature. Um, so instead of thinking that we, we again start by thinking of an alternative you could have said, right? I could have said, uh, we, we start by thinking of an alternative that I could have said, right? I could have said, he knows you have the answers, but instead I chose to say, he thinks you have the answers. Um, in the typical scalar implicature recipe, we would that go to the next step by thinking, if I chose not to say that, that must mean that I don't believe that he knows you have the answers. But instead, for this kind of implicature, the step two has to be a little bit different, right? Instead, we have to consider that I could have said, he knows you have the answers. And if I said that, that would have presupposed that you have the answers, right? So the reason I chose to say that, it's not because I don't believe that he knows you have the answers. Instead, it's because I don't believe that presupposition, right? I chose not to say it because I don't believe you have the, the answers. And if I had said that, it would have presupposed that you have them. So I don't believe you have them, so I didn't say that. The rest of the recipe is as usual, right? So I could have said, he knows you have the answers, but that would have presupposed that you have the answers, and I don't believe that. So step two, I don't believe you have the answers. Step three, I must have an opinion. So step four, I must believe you don't have the answers. So again, in uh, sort of older pragmatic theory, this sort of implicature was called a clausal implicature, and it was argued to be different from a scalar implicature. Um, nowadays, there's some debate about this. A lot of people don't really talk about clausal implicatures anymore, or they, they don't think they're a special kind of implicature. Um, so if you want to delve into this problem deeper, you can read the module online, and there's some discussion of whether this difference can be accounted for in some other way without having to propose a new kind of implicature. Um, but anyway, it's a useful illustration of a subtle difference between different kinds of implicatures, which might need a special kind of explanation to handle it.